So lysosomes are another organelle we're going to talk about, and they're kind of interesting parts of the cell, but basically these are kind of like garbage disposals of the body or of the cell. So it says here, a lysosome is a membranous sac of hydrolytic enzymes, and it can digest all kinds of macromolecules. So underline the word digest there. Okay, this is what lysosomes are going to do. They're going to go in and they're going to digest or tear apart different types of macromolecules that the cell needs to either destroy or break down further so that it can utilize it even more. So again, it's, it's thought of as the garbage disposal. Of so lysosomes are able to digest different components within a cell through these two main processes. And the first process we're going to talk about is called phagocytosis. And this is a process lysosomes use to digest different types of typically food particles. So here it says a process used by organisms such as amoebas, so those are those unicellular protists that, that I think a lot of people have heard of, and it allows them to engulf smaller organisms or, or things such as food particles that the body can use. And uh, here on the bottom it says a food vacuole is formed that fuses with a lysosome and then those enzymes within that lysosome are able to digest the food. So when you think of phagocytosis, think of a lysosome using this process to digest food particles, typically. Now, another process lysosomes use is this second green bullet that they call autophagy. And autophagy is different from phagocytosis in that, in that when a cell is undergoing autophagy, typically it's trying to either destroy or clean up an organelle that might be damaged, or maybe it's trying to get rid of um, something that was maybe formed incorrectly, or maybe there's a microbe that's within the cell. So it says here, it's a process that lysosomes use to recycle their hydrolytic enzymes. So a damaged organelle is likely to become surrounded by some sort of membrane. And from that point, a lysosome can say, hey, I need to get rid of that organelle. It's no good. The cell doesn't need it any longer. So it's going to fuse with that damaged organelle, and it's going to digest, digest it so it's no longer in the cell. So this is an illustration of those two processes. On the left-hand side, you have an illustration of phagocytosis, and you can see that this lysosome is digesting different types of food particles. On the right-hand side is autophagy, and you can see here that a lysosome is breaking down a damaged organelle. Now, vacuoles are important for many different reasons, and typically when you're talking about vacuoles, you're talking about a plant or a fungal cell of some sort. And both of these can have either, either one or many, many vacuoles within a, a cell. But the first type of vacuole I want you to be familiar with are food vacuoles. And these are actually formed by that phagocytosis we just talked about. So within different types of plants or fungus, you can have these vacuoles that store food for the plant or store food for the fungus. Uh, another example of vacuole is, is called a contractile vacuole. And you see a lot of these in different types of protists, but contractile vacuoles are important because they help a cell pump out excess water. Uh, so we said that this occurs frequently in protists. An example of that is a protist is often a unicellular organism. So it's a tiny little critter that's, that's only one cell big. And they have um, kind of a pump that continuously brings water into their cell or into their body. Well, if you're continuously bringing water in, you can only do that to a certain point before you explode. So you have to have a contractile vacuole to pump water back out. So that's a, a good example of where you might see a contractile vacuole. Now another one, and this is kind of your typical example of a vacuole, is something called a central vacuole. And you find these in the middle of plant cells and they encompass a huge portion of a plant cell. And they basically hold reserves or or organic compounds or water for the plant to use whenever it needs it. So if you have house plants at home and you forget to water them, you'll notice that they start to wilt. Well, that's because that central vacuole within all of your 
plant cells is starting to shrivel because it doesn't have enough water. And again, this is just an illustration of a central vacuole you can see within a plant cell. So you can see on the, on the bottom drawing or even on the top one how large that central vacuole is and, and, and that allows you to kind of, or it helps me anyway, to see if I don't water my plants and that vacuole shrinks, that's why my plants start to wilt or they start to fall over. Now mitochondria are, are a very, very important organelle for cells and they're the sites of something called cellular respiration. And we'll talk about that in great detail later. But cellular respiration is basically a cell's way of making energy. So we all need to create energy, right? Energy allows us to function, it allows us to move and, and to be alive. So mitochondria are extremely important organelles in that they are the sites of cellular respiration. And they're found in typically all eukaryotic cells. Now mitochondria are enclosed by two membranes. So they have this smooth outer membrane and then we'll look at a picture in just a minute and you can you can see the difference. But they also have this inner membrane that's folded on top of itself into this structure they call Christi. And here's that illustration. You can see this is our mitochondria. And you see this outer membrane and then within it you have this kind of folding in the in inner membrane. And that folding is, is advantageous because it allows that cell or that mitochondria to produce even more ATP or even more energy for the cell to utilize. Now chloroplasts are really important to plant cells. If you've got if you've heard of chlorophyll, that's all the the, the green goo that makes up plants or that gives plants their green color. Um, that's found within an organelle or a structure called a chloroplast. And chloroplasts are found only in plants and are the sites. So here you can see a chloroplast. And on the upper left hand side of your screen you see those green circles. And so those are your chloroplasts found within a plant cell. Now look in the bottom left hand corner you can see that we have these individual stacks that they call thylakoids. Those thylakoids are stacked on top of each other and that's where you get the name granum. And then within our chloroplast, we have all of this kind of liquid fluid, and that's what they call the stroma. Now, peroxisomes are also found within our cell, and they actually have the ability to produce hydrogen peroxide and convert it to water. Now, these are really important because they help our bodies to, again, just like our smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they're gonna help us to detoxify different types of poisons. And specifically, peroxisomes do a really good job of detoxifying different types of alcohols. So it says here, peroxisomes in the liver detoxify alcohol and other harmful compounds by transferring hydrogen from the poisons to oxygen. So if you have too much fun next Friday night, you can thank your peroxisomes for helping your body to clean itself out. Another organelle is called a glyoxisome. And this is um, kind of interesting because we find a lot of these in the, in the seeds of different plants. So have you ever wondered if you plant a seed, maybe you plant a seed in your garden or you plant it in, in a pot in your house or something, how does that seed grow? It doesn't have sunlight reaching it yet, so, so how is it going to you know, grow to the point where it can poke out of the top of the soil and, and capture sunlight for energy. Well, it's able to do that because of these things that they call glyoxisomes. And these are basically specialized peroxisomes that are found in those fatty storing regions of, of seeds. And what they do is they provide a, a source of energy that those seeds can use until they've produced leaves and stems and can carry out photosynthesis on their own. And this picture is just kind of showing you an example of a peroxisome. 